Hey fellow travelers, just Jeremiah here and the estates at Linden visiting my mom and the beautiful town of Stillwater, Minnesota. Now this is our last couple of hours and right now she is enjoying her meal. I was lucky enough to have spent some time with some really good friends I had worked with last year. Uh, I didn't know them long but they already treat me like, yeah, someone they've known forever. It makes me feel so special. Uh, Drea and Derek work at the Tilted Tiki Bar and if you're ever in Stillwater, Minnesota, you have to stop there if you like a nice friendly bar where the you know everyone's talking to each other and it's very casual and fun and and the bartenders treat you like gold uh, but they have a new menu and Derek is the kitchen manager so he let me try uh, one or two small items and I really enjoyed it and I got to bring some back to my mom so now that I'm back uh, we're just hanging out we'll probably watch a movie she's been in the chair all week and as much as she can and it's it's kind of given her a lot of pain she has issues with her legs and and, and, and a lot of the the lack of circulation and you know being in the chair for like an hour her toes turn purple it's so scary so we're letting her take a rest tonight and she's staying in bed but while I'm here it's not gonna be the longest video uh, but I wanted to share some of my art you know you might not be able to see my paintings uh, for a while till I get all my shit together in life sorry about shades cussing uh, <laughs> But I thought I'd show you. Uh, years ago, I moved to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I was choosing to follow the path of my father, who was an artist. He traveled and surfed and painted. And I moved to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, where I painted this. And he also painted, so he's always been a huge inspiration for me. Now, the old mill is actually the oldest... I'm sorry, it's the most photographed building in North America, according to a plaque there. Who really knows now? But that is where Dollywood is. It used to be Silver Dollar City. It's at the foot of the Great Smoky Mountains. If you see right here, that's Mount Lacan. It's the highest prominent on the East Coast. It was my favorite mountain until I started exploring more. I really love that picture. To me, it represents uh, bounty. You know, the mill was used to grind corn and make meal, and it's what really stimulated the growth of that town there. And having left Pennsylvania to go to the foot of the most visited national park in the U.S., I jumped in head first and I was making great money there. And that's what fueled my travels and got me to get around the country uh, in the beginning of my travels nine years ago when I left Pennsylvania. After I left Tennessee, for the winter I went to Florida and I went to the Cocoa Beach Pier. Now. I'll tell you a story. I was actually painting the pier. Uh, I don't have that painting here. And my father had passed away when I was like 13 and I never got to know him. And as I'm sitting there painting the pier, teaching myself to surf, getting my peace at the place where my father's ashes were spread. Uh, I never got to make it to his funeral, unfortunately. So for me at the age of 29, going there and painting the pier, teaching myself to surf where my father surfed and his ashes were spread. It was the peace I needed my whole life. And I finally got it. I got to, you know, figure out who my father was through living like him. And I got to realize how similar we are, but at the same time, how different. Uh, the very next day, or no, so the one day I'm down there painting and this guy comes up to me. And again, I've never seen my father more than six times in my life. And he was always my hero as a kid. So I was painting and this guy comes up to me and he tells me it's the most detailed painting of the pier he's ever seen. Well, my father had lived there, so I told him about how my dad had lived there, and he'd passed away almost 20 years ago. And I mentioned to the guy, and the guy asks his name, Fred Spellis, I tell him. The guy starts crying. It was my dad's best friend. Here I was 1,700 miles from where I grew up and spent my entire life. And just because I chose to leave and jump out of my comfort zone to pursue a path that I had chosen, I literally got to sit there on a beach drinking a beer with Polly, a man that I met once who was my dad's best friend for 10 years. He was at my father's funeral. He shared things I never learned about him. It was magical. I always knew about my father's life from the moment of the divorce prior when I was three. But I never really knew much after except for that he did art, he traveled, and he lived very simply with next to nothing. I've definitely modeled myself after him in so many ways, but I'm also glad that I've learned to model myself after my mom since then. Uh, you know, a lot of times we don't really fully appreciate something till it's gone, and I'm so glad that it didn't take that, and I got to learn to 
fully appreciate this beautiful woman years before uh, she's going to leave this earth to go to somewhere better. In Cates Cove, which is a great spot to view wildlife in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, uh, there's a mill. It's called Cable Mill. And I painted that right there. I love that one. I love, I didn't finish it, but I love the way it pops. Uh, I may not have mentioned, but this painting over here, the old mail I had given to my mom for Mother's Day two years ago because it is my most special painting to me. And it is, she's the most special person to me. So I just figured, why not make her feel special and give her something bright for her room? Even though she's visually impaired and she can't see it, it's nice because people will come in and ask about it and it gives her something to brag about, about her son and, you know, it lets her feel special and let people know that people see her as special. And I'm really glad because that's the first time I ever gave a painting up and it's still right here, safe, and I get to see it. Uh, I appreciate you letting me share about my art. I do plan, uh, once I fully get everything together, uh, I just can't feel any type of stress, and I suffer from stress, anxiety, depression. What I'm doing is working on those things as I travel. Um, you know, I had a question on my comments from Cody. What's up, Cody? Thank you so much for all your positive energy. And he was asking how I managed to deal with my depression and anxiety while traveling. Uh, that's going to be a whole video in itself, but those things honestly keep me from meeting my full potential. My plan is to someday get back to painting. And I'm going to have a plethora of beautiful photos from the time that I stopped painting maybe six or seven years ago till now that I can go through. But I definitely plan to get back into it and do time lapses and I'm going to include painting on my YouTube. For now, it's just paints are so heavy and I really want to use the expensive paints because it makes it easier. So I have like $300 worth of paints. I just can't carry it around. Someday when I get a car within the next few months, uh, I'll have them and I'm going to be able to achieve so much with my paints, my drone, my DSLR camera, my GoPro. Uh, really, I'm going to get some great footage and eventually I'll get into editing, all that stuff. But I appreciate you letting me share about my art and some of my story and I really can't wait to get into more depth into that story because it's really like, it's honestly, it's a good one. You know me, I'm going to be raw and real about it, so I'm going to tell you all the, the nitty-gritty, like, the stuff that most people might even be embarrassed to talk about. I feel like true manliness is being willing to share your vulnerability. Manliness, you know, isn't about being so strong that you break, because that's what happens, you know? Toss a cat out a window. Sorry, wrong way. If a cat falls out a window, ignore that first part. If a cat falls out a window from a high, uh, high, you know, high distance... If that cat stays strong the way we see strong and goes completely rigid, that cat's dead. But sometimes true strength is, is, is being flexible, you know. And I know it sounds like a little, little bit of silly nonsense, but I, I truly feel that by being able to share some of the, the darker things or the very personal things, it not only helps me by externalizing them, but it also spreads awareness as to how much it can help others through seeing how much it might help me. Uh, I can't wait to talk about that story. Again, my focus this past week has honestly been just my mom, and I want to make sure that she has all my energy, and and uh, I love being here, but it, it does it does take a lot out of me. I'm, I'm giving her energy, and I'm sending her energy, and as much as it might sound weird, but I try to focus on uh, harnessing my heart chakra, more stuff I'll get into later, and you know, sending waves of loving energy through her, and when I hug her and hold her hand, I imagine ways of loving healing energy like Reiki going into her body and helping heal anything that might have ailments uh, but honestly I think it is kind of like almost a draining thing and not in a bad way it's it's draining the way that running a marathon is draining you know running a marathon is tough and it feels like hell in the middle of the process but what you get out of it is so much more than what it costs and that's exactly how I feel about this I'm going to cherish uh these years I have with my mom, almost more than anything, I think, as I grow older, uh, I feel really lucky, and I feel pretty blessed that I have people that actually want to hear about all this stuff, because a lot of times I've just been 
most of my time completely alone and I don't really have the outlets to talk to. Uh, you know, I've got friends I talk to on, lots of great friends actually, that I talk to on like, you know, video calls and this and that, but uh, not everyone's always free and it's nice to be able to just ramble and get it out. So I really appreciate you